The 2023 college football season sucked for Michigan State. Mel Tucker and his whole sexual harassment scandal, the fact that he wasn't building anything in East Lansing, that he had terrible coordinators and Scotty Hazleton and Jay Johnson, he wasn't recruiting well, and the players looked lost, they were underdeveloped. The Spartans did not look like they were functioning well as a Big Ten level program. I mean, for example, Noah Kim, who's transferring to Coastal Carolina, looked like a Matt quarterback. Nathan Carter is a good running back, but he was behind an offensive line that couldn't hold their water at the point of attack against defensive lines that were good, great, and especially if they were near elite or elite. And you are going to be facing more defensive lines that err on the side of great than on the side of trash. But alas, here we are, and Scotty Hazelton and Jay Johnson are gone. Mel Tucker has been gone for months. And for Alan Haller to, before the season even started, wanting Mel Tucker gone, and him being proactive, and then as soon as he could get Tucker out of East Lansing, he did. And for him to bring in Jonathan Smith, And then for Jonathan Smith to bring in his chief of staff, who's been at Oregon State for basically two decades, for him to bring in his strength and and conditioning coach, Mike McDonald, who I think is one of the best in the country, and then to bring in elite assistants like Jim Melchizedek, the offensive line coach, Brian Wozniak, the tight ends coach, Brian Lindegren, the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, and Blue Adams, the defensive backs coach, these are all great hirings. And then to cap it all off, it's been known for a while, but today the official announcement was made that Joe Rossi is going to be Michigan State's new defensive coordinator and also linebackers coach. Harlan Barnett is being retained, and so is Courtney Hawkins. Barnett coached the secondary last season and this season. I'd say last season because Michigan State's partially in the 2024 preseason mode already since they're not playing in a bowl game, but it's technically not the end of 2023 yet. Courtney Hawkins has coached the wide receivers since Mel Tucker came to East Lansing. Both Harlan Barnett and Courtney Hawkins have been with Mel Tucker in East Lansing since he arrived. So they are the two holdovers from the previous staff. I think those holdovers are wise, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Aiton Childs committing to Michigan State, which is a pretty big deal since they didn't have a scholarship quarterback as Keaton Hauser, Noah Kim, and Sam Leavitt all left. Leavitt's transferring to Arizona State, Kim to Coastal Carolina, and Keaton Hauser has not announced a destination yet. But before we get any further into this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell so that you can get notified when I produce more Michigan State and Big Ten football content. This is the best Big Ten football channel on YouTube. If you've been wondering why I haven't been posting a lot recently, it's because I have been sick for about the past week and a half. And if I'm being honest, it's really only been today where I haven't been coughing a fair amount or where I don't have a serious headache. So I'm getting closer to 100%, but I'm still getting back into the rhythm of things and also trying to transfer to more preseason content, which is recruiting, talking about the staff, really a lot of speculation, if I'm being honest, because there aren't games to give previews and predictions for, at least for Michigan State, for example, or Nebraska teams that are not playing in a bowl game shortly. By shortly, I mean within the next few days, there will be an early preview of Michigan-Alabama and of Washington, Texas, and there will be a plethora of videos on both of those games. I wanted to cover them earlier, but again, circle back to me being sick, and I'm still trying to lay those videos out and plan what I want to put, because I want to break down different things, and I also want to watch film on all of those teams as I watch Michigan more than I do Alabama and more than I do Texas and Washington. But we're talking about Michigan State today, so if you want to hear me talk about the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl, you can hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure that you check out my community posts, as that's a way that I like to interact with 
this awesome subscriber base. Comment your thoughts on Michigan State hiring Joe Rossi down below, and also what you think about Aiden Childs coming to East Lansing, as he's obviously going to be quarterback number one. And Michigan State should pursue another quarterback in the transfer portal to give some depth. And lastly, if you want to support my channel and gain some extra bonus content, check out my Patreon page via the link in the description and also in the pinned comment. Thank you very much. Now, this staff I have been impressed by. What... Jonathan Smith has done is he has brought, I think, the best of both worlds together. Clearly in the hiring of Joe Rossi, Jonathan Smith is trying to bring a Big Ten defense and his Pac-12 offense, and I say Pac-12 offense because he ran Washington's offense, I think, in, from 2014 to 2017. Correct me if those dates are wrong under Chris Peterson at Washington. And now he's been running that offense and commanding an offense at Oregon State from 2018, when I believe he was hired. Yeah, that was his first season. All the way up until 2023, this year. He's brought his offensive staff from Oregon State and Blue Adams, who is a defensive backs coach, and defensive backs were part of the strength of Oregon State's defense, if I recall correctly. But hiring Joe Rossi, a good linebackers coach and a defensive coordinator that has reigned over top 10 defenses for several seasons at Minnesota. Defenses that are physical, defenses that are not known for being too fanciful, that are not necessarily known for always trying to apply pressure but a conservative defense, really a classic Big Ten West defense, a physical defense that's good at tackling, typically good at fundamentals. That's why Minnesota's defense struggled mightily this season, is they weren't good at fundamentals. They weren't great at tackling. They had questionable depth, and they were a boomer bust defense, and that doesn't work with what Joe Rossi wants to do. I think that's the best of both worlds. Michigan State prides themselves on having a Big Ten defense. And Oregon State, even though they had some of the better defenses in the Pac-12 under Jonathan Smith, they did not have great or near elite or elite defenses. They didn't. They had good defenses. Defenses that looked like the cream of the crop when you play in the Pac-12 and most teams don't have defenses, but they weren't SEC or Big Ten level defenses. And Brian Lindegren stayed in-house and was promoted to be the head coach of Oregon State anyway. So he had to go get other options. And I mentioned Rossi because Rossi is defensive coordinator at Minnesota. I think he's a top 15, top 10, top 20 defensive coordinator nationally. And it was a good... I think it's a good choice. He's local because he coached for another Big Ten school, Minnesota. He knows how to develop. Minnesota is a program under P.J. Fleck where they do not recruit at even close to a top 25 level. So he is constantly having to find diamonds in the rough. It's a program that prioritizes scouting over directly recruiting. And they have to, because Minnesota is not a big brand. They don't have a lot of name, image, and likeness money to hash out. And they're just a, that's just how they operate. It's how P.J. Fleck has always operated. And at Michigan State, it can and should be different than that. Michigan State has an easier time recruiting than Minnesota. Their program is all in. You could tell that with how Alan Haller handled this whole business with hiring Jonathan Smith and his staff and paying Jonathan Smith a, a handsome salary that is above $7 million and the new facilities. You could tell that from how Michigan State hired Mel Tucker with that you know, basically $10 million a year over 10-year deal, $95 million over 10 years. That's a whole lot of money to invest in a coach. That, in a certain sense, reset the coaching salary market, especially now that we see that after... Mel Tucker got that big pay raise. 
Ryan Day got a pay raise, Franklin labored for a pay raise, and Jim Harbaugh might be getting $11 million a year with the, the latest Jim Harbaugh extension rumors. So Michigan State's an invested program, but they had to get someone who knows the area because Smith does not know the area, nor does his offensive staff. But Joe Rossi knows the Big Ten, and so does Courtney Hawkins, so does Harlan Barnett, and Alan Haller playing for Michigan State, and also I think now solidifying himself as an up-and-coming athletic director, an athletic director who's made a big move. Is it a move that I'm confident will be successful? We'll just have to wait and see. But until then, we can speculate, and I will speculate that the Jonathan Smith hiring will be looked back upon as a successful hiring. Smith is innovative. Smith is intelligent. He knows how to develop quarterbacks, and he knows how to scheme offenses. I said he, he knows how to develop quarterbacks because he does. Think Jake Browning at Washington, or think DJ Uyunglele making strides and improvements this year at Oregon State. Look at Aiden Childs. But he's also found ways to win without great quarterback play. Think of Chance Nolan and think of other quarterbacks who are escaping me that Jonathan Smith won with at Oregon State. He had a 10-win season last year where his starting quarterback was out, injured for the whole year. The defense, the offensive line, and Damian Martinez at running back led that team to a 10-3 and record. That was the most successful season for Oregon State in quite some time. I don't even think Mike Riley had quite the team that Jonathan Smith did last year in 2022. I just wanted to list some brief thoughts about all of these topics. I haven't talked much about Aiden Childs yet, but don't worry, we will, because we're talking about him right now. He was a top 100 quarterback out of high school for 24-7 sports. He threw for 309 yards and four touchdowns in 2023. Childs was going to be the future of Oregon State. Oregon State already had their offensive line lined up. They have their defense set in stone. This is where I was going, was Jonathan Smith was winning before he got his guy in at quarterback. The team was progressing, and the quarterback was a final piece. You look at Jaden Gould and Silas Bolden at wide receiver and Jack Velling at tight end this year for Oregon State. If they had a better quarterback, if they had a Michael Penix Jr. or a Bo Nix instead of a DJ Uyunglele, that would have helped contribute to better success. Now, that wasn't the only problem with Oregon State. Their defense fell off from last year because of how much production they lost. But Jonathan Smith is in an area with better recruits, he has greater pipelines because of the brand, but also because of the staffers that he retained and hired. So he has Big Ten connections, but also he has those West Coast connections. He can recruit better. He has better facilities. Therefore, he can develop better. And all these things, along with the fact that his quarterback that he recruited and the best quarterback that he has recruited, when you look at high school ratings on a talent perspective, is following him now to East Lansing. This will hopefully help Smith have greater consistency. And the only problem with that is the Big Ten's tougher than the Pac-12. But the Pac-12 just had one of their best seasons ever in recent memory. And the Big Ten, really, this season, and also last season outside of Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State, has been pretty pathetic. So... There is opportunity for Jonathan Smith and Michigan State. I know it sounds insane. I don't want to go out on a sales pitch like some of these Colorado fans did last season. You can put fans in quotes because they became fans only because of Deion Sanders, who were trying to sell people that Colorado was going to immediately come out and punch everyone in the gut and contend for the playoff. That was never realistic. That was asinine. And that right there, when people stated asinine and heretical things like that, they outed themselves as a college football casual. Well, Michigan State has more talent than Colorado at a base level, and they're probably not going to have the same 
you know, eye attention and clicks and all that stuff, all the pop around them that Colorado does right now. What they do have is a greater base talent pool. They won't need to weed out the entire roster and bring in 70 new scholarship players. They won't need to. And they, I think, have a better coaching staff. And I think that those things combined with having a good quarterback who's transferring in, there are going to be several other players who transfer in too. I think that Michigan State will have a top 25 transfer portal class when all this is said and done, perhaps even better. And that along with a recruiting class where you you still get Nick Marsh and you still get some other Mel Tucker, Mel Tucker recruits. They're few and far between, but you get something. And I think that Michigan State could have some limited success next season. What will that look like? I don't know. In my mind, limited success is six, seven wins. It's going bowling. Maybe eight wins. Maybe they can do better than that. I don't know. It's way too early to even make way too early predictions, though those will be out the days following the national championship game. But Aiden Childs is a great quarterback. He had an 85.6 QBR, according to ESPN. Again, 309 passing yards, four touchdowns, all on 35 attempts. He averaged 8.8 yards per pass attempt. He had a 180.4 passer rating, and he had 79 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, averaged 4.6 yards per rush as well. I think him transferring to East Lansing was essentially a guarantee when he entered the transfer portal. It is good, though, and it should be celebrated that that came true because you never know sometimes when players enter the portal. For example, Caleb Williams at one point, it was thought that maybe he could transfer to Georgia or Wisconsin instead of following Lincoln Riley or that he could stay at Oklahoma. There's always a chance of the unexpected. And with the transfer portal, with name, image, and likeness, with TCU beating Michigan, last season in the playoffs, with Cincinnati reaching the playoffs with an undefeated record, with Ohio State beating Alabama in 2014 as an underdog, with Clemson smashing Alabama in the 2018 National Championship game, expect the unexpected has, in a certain sense, become a motto of college football. So it's good that the expected came true in favor of Michigan State and Jonathan Smith. Joe Rossi. Rossi commanded the 6th, 4th, and 71st best scoring defenses in 2021, 2022, and 2023 at Minnesota. That last one, people look at that and they should be concerned, rightfully so. But you you can't forget the 2021 and 2022 defenses. And Minnesota, this year, to their credit, they played both Michigan and Ohio State. Those are two teams that have top 10 offenses. I know that their offenses don't always look top 10, but I think Ohio State's is still fringe top 10. Michigan's offense is probably top 8, top 6. It would be hard to say they're higher than top 6 or top 5. But pretty good offenses. Great near elite elite offenses is what Minnesota faced. And they also played North Carolina in Drake May. They played Nebraska. They played a Louisiana team that has some offensive firepower. They played a Northwestern team that was better than expected. Their wins were over Iowa, Michigan State, Louisiana, Eastern Michigan, and Nebraska. The only Power 5 team that they beat with a winning record was Iowa on the road in a rivalry game and a game that easily could have been a loss if Cooper DeGene's punt return was not called back as a fair catch. It was a very weird turn of events. Part of what didn't help Minnesota was not just their lack of returning production, and also what I think was some poor coaching and and poor development. I think Minnesota was one of the bigger disappointments of the 2023 college football season. The offense sucked. Minnesota's offense was 116th in scoring offense this season compared to 66th in 2022 and 83rd in 2021. 
They only scored 20.2 points per game, and in 2022 and 2021, they scored 28 and 25 points per game. That extra 5 to 8 points per game is a pretty big deal. Minnesota was much more effective at running and passing the football in 21 and 22 than they were this season, and that combined with an additional drop-off, a massive drop-off defensively along with a drop-off offensively meant that a team that had gone 9-4 and four for two years in a row was destined to slip up, given those scoring offense and scoring defense numbers. And here we are. Minnesota will play in a bowl game, the Quick Lane Bowl versus Bowling Green, but they're 5-7. and seven. The only reason they got to play in a bowl game is because of their high academic progress rate. Joe Rossi's defense in 2021 only allowed 97.8 rushing yards per game and 181.2 passing yards per game. They only allowed about six first downs per game, and they averaged one takeaway per game. This is the 2021 defense. The 2022 defense allowed 109 rushing yards per game and 185.7 passing yards per game, and they averaged about 1.4 takeaways per game, averaging a whole interception per game as well. Joe Rossi and Minnesota have had a knack of, whether it's Antoine Winfield, whether it's Tyler Newbin, Jordan Howden, Justin Wally, they have a habit of great secondary play and of using their secondary and linebacker core especially to force the turnovers, to do the dirty work, and they rely a lot on their corners and safeties in coverage to do their job. And Minnesota's defense allowed some big plays this season, whether it's through the secondary or on the ground game in the perimeter. Minnesota's secondary and linebacker core, while having strong points, also had weak points this season. So I love this hiring. There are areas to look out, though, in the sense that Joe Rossi, I don't think, is a Phil Parker. It was rumored that Jonathan Smith actually contacted Phil Parker, but was turned down, which is expected. It's disappointing, yes, but Joe Rossi, I think, is a top 20, top 15, maybe top 10 defensive coordinator. I had him top 10 in the preseason because of just how bad this season went. He lost some of his luster from my perspective, but my expectations for Minnesota were probably too high this season, so I have to check myself there. I think the Joe Rossi hiring is great. It's really great, and... Hopefully, Michigan State is able to re-recruit back some of their defensive players who entered the portal who were good, or at least they can keep the players who already haven't entered the transfer portal. Michigan State had players this season that if they were coached better or developed better, they could have been studs. But because of Scotty Hazleton and Jay Johnson getting free reign on the program for four seasons, that... That ruins some things, let me tell you. And lastly, staff retention. The Spartans are retaining Harlan Barnett and Courtney Hawkins from Mel Tucker's staff. We talked about this for a little bit. I think that that's wise. I think that you need coaches who have ties to the university in some way. More importantly, though, you need coaches who have ties to recruits in your conference's pipelines. And Harlan Barnett and Courtney Hawkins have those relationships. They do. And so does Joe Rossi. So Jonathan Smith has a handful of coaches that can help him get inroads and pipelines and form relationships with local high school coaches and high school players. And I think that will be useful. Because for Michigan State to compete in this era of college football— I don't know if you can exactly do it the Mark D'Antonio way. Maybe you can, but I think there needs to be better recruiting than what was the norm under Mark D'Antonio with the same development, and that can reap massive, massive benefits. Michigan State is already in 2024 preseason mode, so I am going to briefly run through Michigan State's 2024 schedule, but I'm going to be talking about that more in detail with like legitimate thoughts after 2023 is done with. Michigan State opens up next season, hosting Florida Atlantic. They then travel to Maryland, host Louisiana, play at Boston College, host Ohio State, 
play at Oregon. They have a bye. They host Iowa, play at Michigan, host Indiana, play at Illinois after a bye. And they host Purdue and Rutgers in back-to-back games. That's a schedule with a lot of challenge, but also a lot of opportunity. There's no Penn State on the schedule. There's no Washington, essentially what Washington would be on the schedule from a non-conference toughness perspective is at Boston College, and they have Thomas Castellanos, who is, I think, either going to enter the portal or stay at Boston College. I don't think he's NFL eligible, and he has more than enough talent to upgrade his NFL stock, but Boston College is not Washington, not one bit. So there's a lot of opportunity on this schedule for Jonathan Smith to come out and get this team going bowling, or at least having them potentially contend for that 12-team playoff in year one, or at least a top 25 finish. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Those are just my brief thoughts on what Jonathan Smith has done so far at Michigan State, bringing in Aiden Childs, hiring Joe Rossi, retaining Harlan Barnett, Courtney Hawkins, and also bringing in his offensive staff. I think Mike McDonald and that strength and conditioning program are legit. To have a roster outside of the top 50 in team talent composite by 24-7 sports and to have them be one of the most physical offensive lines in the country in a defense that plays with speed and finesse, that's impressive. I think you will see strength, gained weight, and built-up speed and endurance in this next Michigan State football team that we have not seen in quite some time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks to Crash2488 for being a Heisman patron in the month of December. Thanks to Spencer Bringhurst for being an All-American patron in the month of December. And thanks to Will Loftus, Gabriel Callender, Roaming Gnome, Matthew Sale, Chris Lane, Austin Christmas, and Zubin Zah for being All-Conference patron members of the month of December. Thank you so much again for being a part of this channel, and check out my Patreon page if you want to support the channel and also gain some insider content. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you all around. Bye-bye.